Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and today I want to show you an advanced and a cool way to make time lapse. I'm gonna use the Moza Mini S if you want to see the review of that, that video it's over there on the link. Although this gimbal has an internal ready to share time lapse feature, I want to use a way more advanced time lapse to make. Okay, so what I am trying to do is actually try to photograph all in RAW. So let me just explain what I'm on about, okay? So on the left, it's the clip made with the Moza app. Uh, it's not bad, but yeah, it, it's, uh, the, the movement of the persons are all sharp, everything, it looks like a cartoon, of course. Now, on the right, because I am photographing with a long exposure, everything it's smoothly mixed together to make this video. Of course you can notice as well the colors and the dynamic range it's way better it's much better on the clip on the right because well I photograph in RAW there you go I have way more freedom in post-production photographing in RAW. For that we're gonna use two phones so you have to borrow uh, a phone from your friend. I am using the LG G5 to take pictures for an uh, obvious reason is because I am using Andy filters like, as you can see here and this adapter, Andy filter adapter, only works with lenses that uh, are closer to the edge of the phone so my OnePlus it's not usable here. I'm gonna use the, an app called Intervalometer on the LG to take the pictures so it's a really cool app for time lapse with mobile phones. So I'm gonna use the native app for Moza on my OnePlus. So usually the phone that is on the gimbal should have this app active, but as we are trying to change stuff and make the coolest time lapse ever, we're gonna use it remotely. We're gonna cheat the app to think that it's on the gimbal, but it isn't on the gimbal. That is the the thing that we're gonna do here. So, in resume, we're gonna use two apps on the LG, the intervalometer, as well, the native camera app, because it has professional mode, so I can shoot manually. I put a bunch of filters on the front of the lens, so we have a, a little bit of long exposure. And in here, the native modes app, that it should be there, but it's here. And uh, yeah, let's configure the time-lapse. So, let's try first activate the intervalometer app and as you can see here, there is a time-lapse calculator over here, so I can put the number of images that I want to shoot. It will be around 300. If you are at 30 images per second, uh, this will be 10 seconds, okay? And now, here, the shooting length, we're gonna stay here for 15 minutes, but uh, this is just an example, just to be sure that my numbers are correct. So. Let's go back on this app and let's activate the intervalometer. So you have these windows over here that you can remote shoot. Salut, ça va? Ouais, toi? Je suis en train d'enregistrer Now let's launch the native camera app that is from LG over here. Let's see if it's pointing at the right place no it isn't you have to shoot over here and uh yeah there we go now uh we are ready to shoot as you can see i am in fully manual mode my shutter speed is uh a 30th of a second and the iso it's the minimal so like this i have a little bit of a long exposure and if i make a test shot you see that the people are a little bit on motion blur that's exactly what i want so let's go back and point this at the right place like so there you go that app it's ready to work let's work on this one now on this one i am already connected to the moza via bluetooth so now what i have to do it's go to the settings over here and let's go to shooting mode selected and let's select motion time lapse there you go now let's select the in point of the time lapse there we go and let's save it and let's select the end point and let's turn it like so there we go i want the end point over here there we go now you can add more keyframes or more points but for this tutorial i'm gonna just leave it as so Let's go to the next step. Shooter interval will be of two seconds. 
it's not that important, but let's leave it as so. Next step, total duration. So we're gonna stay here for 15 minutes. There you go. And let's start, launch the time-lapse. So it will reset and let's start as well here. There we go. Now, the funny thing is that this app over the, the Moza app will record a time lapse from the camera of the, the this phone. So I'm gonna have two time lapses. One will be shot on raw, but this one, it's a fun one to share on social media of the Moza doing its thing. So there we go. Uh, we are done taking pictures. Now let's jump to the computer and edit those pictures into a video time lapse, shall we? So I have to explain one thing. I already copied the raw files from the phone so that you can see the extension it's DNG. And this is a raw file. Why I am photographing with a raw file? Because I want to recover as the maximum as possible from the dynamic range have the most use of the color, everything. So the DNG, it's a raw file. I have way more room in the post-production. That's why I am taking the pictures in pro mode, in raw, etc. Now, you must be wondering as well why I was doing a little bit of long exposure. As you can see, it's 0.3 of a second. This is already a bit of a long exposure. And the main reason it's because I want to the frames connect with each other. So let me just try to explain here. If I click on the picture, the next picture, as you can see, the motion blur, it's connecting the pictures to each other. So this will make a much better time lapse because the motion blur will link all the image together. So the, pe the people moving around, the clouds won't look like a cartoon, it will look more like a video. That's why I am using a long exposure. Another thing that I have to point out, I am using Adobe software. Mainly Bridge, Camera Raw and Premiere Pro and Photoshop of course. But if you want to suggest other software and some tutorial links would be much appreciated, please leave it down below in the comments. Okay, I would appreciate that. Let's do this. As you can see, I already did some editing. If you know Bridge a little bit, you know that this icon, it's meaning that I did some editing. Let me just show you what I did. This is not really a tutorial how to edit the photos. Uh, there is a bunch of them uh, in here. I'm gonna use Camera Raw if you want to use uh, Lightroom. The interface, it's very similar and it's exactly the same how it will work the raw file. Now, let's work on this sequence. Of course, this first picture, it's not important because it's my test shot. The sequence actually starts here. So let's select everything. Control A, there we go. Press the raw icon and it will load all these images into camera raw. Here it is. Now, what I like to do is go roughly at the middle of the sequence here select the image and I will try to play a little bit with this image. Now, I did already cropped, as you can see, I cropped the arm of the gimbal here uh, and I kept it at 9 by 16 because this is a video, of course, and play a little bit with the exposure, but I am seeing that it's a little bit underexposed here, so I'm gonna just push the exposure a little bit up. Now I am losing details in the highlights, so I'm gonna push up a little bit the whites here. There we go. The shadow is it's all the way in. And just remove a little bit of contrast, like so. There we go. So you can play with all these settings. Of course, I activate it to remove the chromatic aberration. A little bit of a contrast via the curve. So I think it's a little bit too extreme. There we go. And there we go. Now, I want now to sync all these modifications from this image to all the others. So, clicking on this icon here, I'm gonna make Control A to select 
all the sequence as you can see and now as the blue one is highlighted I want to sync all the settings that I made here to the other ones and the shortcut it's Alt S okay now I'm gonna cancel that of course you can right click and sync settings it will work the same just to the heck of it let's select all of the settings press ok it will update and there we go and now what I can do is save the image with all of them selected a lot of people like to use this I don't I actually use a different way so let's cancel and let's click done and there we go now the preview will update there we go and what I like to do is check the first images if they are good and they are looking very good and of course check the end of the sequence and yeah it's the shadow area but it's looking reasonably good so I'm gonna leave it as so now I'm gonna ask is Photoshop to export all these images so again select one image Control A so it selects everything and let's go to tools Photoshop image processor now it will load Photoshop for me and now jumping in in Photoshop here we have the image processor already load so I want to save the files in the same locations and save as JPEG quality 9 it's more than enough some people like to put it 10 but for experience 9 for a smartphone processed image it's more than enough and let's leave it everything as it is and press run now Photoshop will open one by one each image read the raw format and compress it into a JPEG now let me just go back to bridge as you can see now we have a new folder called JPEG and if I get in here we have our JPEG files and I am back the exporting of the images from DNG to JPEG it's done and now let's import this to Premiere Pro it will cause a problem because I know that it will cause a problem and I will explain why now here let's import double click to import select the first image just check the image sequence so Premiere Pro knows that it's an image sequence open and boom it only imported the first image it is not a time lapse so why that is happening it's pretty damn simple is because as you can see here the file naming is awkward it's a little bit strange a lot of smartphones do this and I like that smartphones do this because it has the date so the year the month the day and the hour and the second of the photo so this is really handy but as an image sequence it doesn't make any logic to Premiere Pro so let's select all the images and there we go and let's go to tools batch rename and there we go now what I like to do is just rename everything so it's a sequence number four digits and let's start with picture number one and there we go so current file name is like this and it will be like this and let's just rename everything in the same folder we don't want a copy rename copyright okay as you can see now it's an image sequence nice so let's go back to Premiere Pro let's select to import double click and here we have it image sequence open and we have 18 seconds of video sequence now very important thing is that you can right click go to modify interpret footage and for the moment it's copying uh, the 24 images per second of my timeline if I want that it's okay if I don't want for example I want 30 images per second I can change it here now I want to keep the 24 images per second click OK and let's drag this and put it on the timeline 
as you can see there is a little bit something happening here a little bit of zoom because the smartphone has a very high resolution and this bad boy it's getting out of the frame here so there you go you can push it by hand or right click and set to frame size and as you can see the scale it's now adapted to fill the frame there you go of course now that you have this much you can actually animate and zoom in if you want until 100 percent without losing any resolution as this is a 4k timeline we don't have a lot of room to play but we have a little bit so i can play with like a digital zoom now for example in the beginning i want to be wide and then zoom in at the end i can without losing that much resolution but for this tutorial i don't want that so yeah okay and let's again right click on the clip and set to frame size there you go this is how i make time lapses with the gimbal even if i am using my big camera the the, the dslr camera with a big gimbal i do the exact same thing because i want to have the maximum details in raw and everything the main thing is that it's very cool is uh is with a smartphone and a gimbal a very cheap gimbal you can do this there you go so i really hope you guys like this uh video tutorial drop a like if you learned something leave it the question zone below in the comments and subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. I am Miguel, until next time, see ya!